Hello, my lovely friends. Thank you so much for coming to the Intuitive Art Show. We have an amazing guest today, Jean Berry. She is a miracle worker. She is an artist. She is so many amazing things that we're going to find out about. And we both did a drawing for you today. What we're going to talk about mainly is daily practices, how they can benefit you, how you can find out which ones will benefit you the most, uh, what kind of transformations they can uncover for you. And so before we get into that, why don't we do a drawing? If you have, uh, since this is pre-recorded, you can pause this now and do your own drawing. My question was, show me the daily practices that will benefit me right now. And Jean, did you have a different question or did you do that too? I did the same question. Yes. Awesome. If you've never done intuitive art with me before, you can get a free class at intuitiveartacademy.com. It's really just an easy way to talk to your higher self. And as we all know, that little intuition is always giving us some really great advice. So uh, without further ado, why don't why don't you go first, Jean, and let us know what your drawing has to say about your daily practices. Okay, well, I was, it, it's so fun to do this, and I, I, I actually forget to do this kind of practice. I love how you've set this up, and so I will, I will show my picture here. So here is my picture, and so the, the red, it kind of almost looks like a little angel at the top with a big, huge halo in the upper corner. And so, of course, for me, that always means do some sort of connection to source or, or um, and the fact that it's red, I think is kind of interesting because for, for me, red was really like passionate or out there, like a little over what's comfortable, right? <laughs> a little further than what's really comfortable. Um, and then all the yellow in the middle, yellow for me, of course, is, is I glow, it's bright, you know, doing something. Um, although yellow also came up as a little uncomfortable too, which is really interesting because it's about pushing them to the edge, something like that. And then there's this little green swirly here in the middle. Um, and for me, that's something fresh, clear, growing. Um, and the fact that it's a little swirly is always about creation. And so creating something every day for me is really, really important as well. And then all this boxy stuff down here feels just really grounded. Um, Anything else about that? What do you think? That is so sacred, kind of like that's it's a box to hold it. Mm, it's like yeah, it's like you're you're safe to go to your limits. You're safe to be a little bit more passionate than normal, right? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I had something very similar. Um, it's quite remarkable how similar it is. The <laughs> The same kind of squiggly swirls and almost the same colors. Um, it is. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. I, it's intuitive art, it just never ceases to amaze me. This happens all the time. All right. So in this corner is my joy color. And, you know, it's funny. I've kind of told myself over the years that I'm not really a morning person. And so sometimes I wake up really slowly. I've since started waking up and immediately working out, which helps me fire off those, uh, you know, oxygen molecules in my body. But this is saying like even more, go further. Like you're saying, go to your edge, do something that's going to really put me in that joy state right away. And then this is contentment. Like it's like that feeling you get after you do your gratitude practice. Like you just feel so good in your life. You feel really solid. So that's what that feeling is about. And then here's more groundedness. And I think this is about like picking my focus for the work day or the fun day, just instead of going on default and not really setting up my day, like think about a structure or a focus that would help me get the most out of each day. And then this is a container of a really dark green color, which to me is introspection. And I think this is saying, like, go to the core of what I really want. Like, don't be afraid to really ask what would absolutely make me the most joyful or the most content or the most happy in that structure, which is a good reminder. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I love how that setting is for daily practices because that's really the core of our life. It's how our life rolls out in, in a daily practice. It, it only rolls out each day at a time, each moment at a time. And, and those rituals and the things that we do every day makes it work. Absolutely. So if you guys at home have a drawing that you want to share with us, you can go into the Facebook group. If you just go to Facebook slash groups slash Intuitive Art Academy, you'll find us. Um, and so now, Jean, I love this topic because you're right. You know, we live moment to moment, um, day to day on a lar larger scale. What brought you into this idea of having a daily practice? Like, how did this start for you? Well, you know, it actually goes back a, a little bit, a little ways for me, um, because I, when, I, when I was 18, actually, I started my first business. <laughs> and, and of course, I knew nothing, I, but it, I loved the possibility of freedom and, and all those kind of things. And, I, but I fortunately got a really great mentor who says, you have a lot to learn and um, started sending me a book every single month. And I read them every single month for many, many years. I read all kinds of books, starting with, you know, the, the magic of thinking big and, and um, think and grow rich and some of those classics. And then on to, you know, some of the classic self-help kind of stuff. And um, after some time, I actually met my dear friend, Lynn True, who ultimately died from breast cancer in 2005. And she, for nine years, was um, battling breast cancer. And we went on a journey together that said, who heals and why? Which ultimately then is about who gets a miracle, right? Who, who, who gets the magic? And along the way, we got certified in all kinds of interesting healing modalities and traveled all around and met with gurus and all kinds of things like that. And so, so I had this kind of business background and then it went into this healing thing. And then I went to art school <laughs> saying, what is it? How, and then how does all this fit together? And ultimately, what I discovered, you go out to the macro right and then you come all the way back down to the minute and what's today's day is that you can only affect life from minute to minute. So this whole idea of daily practices became more important than anything else because it's the only place you live your life is, is in this moment right now. And so that's kind of the long story of, of how I got here in, in all of these different places. And then how does it all fit together? How does that really work? And it works in daily practice. Mm, that's really beautiful. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you're up to right now so we can kind of gain more context about where you're coming from and what this has helped you create? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. I've been, I've been working with people in the last eight years in um, attraction marketing. And that's been a really cool place. And um, last fall, I decided to launch the Business Miracle Academy. And what that is for is for authors, speakers, healers, um, people who have a big message to put out in the world who really want a miracle. They really want their um, business to expand. They want to be able to make money with what they're passionate at. They want to have their, their daily inner life be reflected out. And, um, and so as I set that up, I'm, I'm very excited then that this whole year of, of processing all that is turning into the next thing I'll be launching is a game, which is about a daily practice. And it's called Angels, Peacocks, and Butterflies, 100 Days of Miracles. And so I'll be launching that um, on September 1st. And so, and all kinds of cool opportunities along the way. But that's, that's what I'm working on right now that I'm very excited about. Very cool. Um, so what is your daily practice? That's an excellent question. 
Um, I do. I always wake up and I do go swimming because I got a pool. I just moved. I don't know. If I, oh yeah, I did tell you that. I just moved to a house with a pool, and there's just something really magic about jumping in the water and, and swimming. So I either swim or, or do um, yoga or some sort of stretching each day. Get get the body moving, like you say. That whole joyful place, and how do you get there faster? And then I do a deep breathing exercise that turns on my higher brain and <laughs> makes all of that work. Um, and then I do a daily practice about listening to my guidance for that day. What is it that um, is the highest and best? If, if I only did one thing today, what would move everything forward and make it easier and more fun? Mm. And, um, and then I ask what the divine's job is in that because my job is in all of that. And, and, and I ask for what I want the divine to provide then. So if I need to make sales calls, for instance, which in business is one of those typical things, right? You need to call people or, or follow up with someone. And, um, the whole idea of doing that sometimes just fills me with panic until I, you know, all calm down yet. If I can say, well, my job is to make the calls, the divine's job is to have happy, fun people answer and say yes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I don't need to take responsibility for the outcome. Just for doing whatever shows up that day, that's the highest and best. And sometimes the highest and best thing is not a, a business action. I think I heard you say the other day was you, you got exercise. You wanted to increase your sales and you got a, a hit that says, well, you should exercise. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's a lot. And I think for people listening who aren't accustomed to structuring their mornings to set them up for a success during the day, um, where's a good place to start? How can they find out? I mean, if they don't do the drawing, right? Like how could they find out what would be a good place for them to begin with? Yeah. Well, that is an excellent question because that's where I lived most of the time prior to doing any daily practice is that I always was feeling guilty. You're supposed to exercise and you're supposed to do prayer or some other sort of um, spirit thing. And then you're supposed to do something for your relationships. And it, it does feel really, really overwhelming. And that's why I condensed it all together into a single game, right? If you take five minutes of your day and center, that's usually all you need to do. And I think most people simply need to start there. And, and was the impetus for me for, for creating a game because it, first of all, for most people, it has, it has to be fun. If it's not going to be fun, they're not going to do it every single day <laughs> because that's just annoying. And so let's, let's find something fun. And, and I love the idea of doing intuitive drawing, saying, well, what is my best practice today? Just ask for one, just one. That's all. And start with that. Very cool. So, all right, what is angels, butterflies, and peacocks? Peacocks. <laughs> well, you know, that is really interesting because as we started this whole inquiry of, like, who heals and why, who gets a miracle, right? And so um, at the same time I was in this inquiry about um, – what, who, who gets healing while who gets a miracle I was also doing a lot of painting and I started to get all this imagery of angels peacocks and butterflies and I was working with a bunch of people at that moment in their businesses and discovering that some people had a real propensity for for living inside of their their head within themselves like holding this really lovely space and some people were really really good about going out there and connecting with people and pulling them into their thing. And other people were really just great in getting in action. And this whole idea of the, the threesome of have, do, be, mind, body, spirit, um, inner, outer, collective, there's all these threesomes that go together. And I started to see how they all aligned. And I started to give them the name that I was seeing in my paintings, which was angels, peacocks, and butterflies. And so angels, I named the people who really love to look inside. If you ask them a question and say, let's get going, they're going to say, well, let's align that. Let's look at our time frame. They, they really want to see how it all fits together. And then some people, you, you would talk about a project and they say, well, let's get some friends. We'll talk to some people and see how that all works and how that works together. And then there's the other people who said, well, let's get to work. Let's go try it. 
And if it works, then we'll come back and report and, and tweak it and make it go. And so as I started to see these three ways of being, I also saw the challenges these people were having in the same spots, that their challenges actually were showing them the way to get out of the challenge because of the way they were being. And so we align each the angel, peacock, and butterfly and say, what are you doing really well? And what is that showing that you then that you need to adjust to make it work better? If you tell someone who has an angel propensity to just do it, which is a classic for like a peacock person, they get really pissed, right? So the <laughs> peacock is, is the doer. Yes, the peacock is the doer. And I had a conversation oh. like that yesterday. <laughs> it didn't go so well. I found the peacock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, especially if, if, if an angel is hiring someone who's a peacock coach, it just doesn't work. You know, they ha- it sounds really great, but they are never going to approach their world in a just do it kind of way until they've aligned their time and aligned all their inner voices <laughs> to all say, yeah, let's go. They are never going to be on board enough to get into action enough to make it happen. And so we really need to work with them on aligning. They have to be aligned or they're just never going to get into action. They will. And they'll be, when they get in action, they're incredibly loyal and they're incredibly able to make it happen because they're very grounded in clarity. They know exactly what they want, where they're going and how it's going to work. And, but they can't start at action. It just won't work for them. Whereas peacocks, you must start them in action. You have to start in action or they're just going to get mad. They're going to be like, this is dragging on too long. What are we doing here? And so you need to give them enough why to move forward. And then along the way, give them clarity and give them, you know, collaboration and make sure that they're checking in with the people that are going to help them and, and not just going in on, as a lone ranger and making that happen. And then the butterflies, of course, you better pull a team around them and say, let's, let's get some feedback from other people. You know, you're going to start there and say, let's get some feedback and make this all work. And then we can get into action in a, in a smaller way. And then ultimately we will align, you know, all their clarity and, and their time and all those kind of things. Because us poor butterflies, I am so much a butterfly, I'll go find people and we'll do things, but we don't even want to get paid for what we do because it's so natural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just pull people in all the time. And it's really difficult for us to say, well, okay, now start paying me for what I've been doing for you for years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we need to find a way to pull all that in so it all works for us. And and so that's where the angel, peacock, and butterfly thing came. Did, did, I, did I make sense out of that? <laughs> Yes, I think it's probably going to take a minute to sink in for people. Um, Have you written this book yet? That's what I want to know. Actually, so this is what's really exciting. So I made a little quiz um, that I will send you. In fact, you can text me. You text the word butterfly to 313131. And I will send you the quiz. You can take it, find out if you're an angel, peacock, or butterfly. And then when you answer me back and say, I'm a peacock, then I will send you my ebook for free all the way until September 1st. So September 1st is the freebie. We're going to have um, all kinds of very fun things going on. So butterfly to 313131. So if, if you don't text, see, this is a very confusing thing for people who don't text. It's not actually a phone number you're texting to. It's just a number, 313131. And you you type the word butterfly into the message piece, and then you'll get a message right back right away saying the Business Miracle Academy welcomes you. And then if you just don't want to get text anymore, you just type stop, and then hit return, and it, you will stop getting texts from me. If you hate texts and you don't want to do texts, I will also send you a, a message that says, "Would you prefer email?" give me your email address and I will send it to you via email. So it's really, really easy, really simple. And if you've never done it before, it's okay. (laughs) It's really slick and works really cool. So yes, I have a very sweet little quiz that you can find out if you're an angel, peacock, or butterfly. And then that forms, of course, your, um, your daily practice. Like how you ask about that. Yeah. Like there's gotta be different ones for different types of people, right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Peacocks are naturally need to do something physical. They just do. That's where you should start because you need to get your body moving. Now, everyone ultimately needs a physical practice of some sort because body is where we live on the earth and we need to actually move it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but certainly peacocks, a daily practice of, of moving their body in some way is a great place to start. Um, angels really need to start with a centering practice, something that's going to get them connected to their trusted source, um, get answers. Intuitive drawing would be a perfect daily practice for, for someone who identifies an angel. Although a peacock, that's a moving thing too. It gets your body moving. You're actually engaging both pieces. That's good. Actually, it probably would work for all of them. <laughs> we, can do, we can incorporate that certainly into all types. And then butterflies... Um, need to do something collaborative. And so if if they're going to do a physical practice, they probably need a friend that'll show up or at least text them and say, did you do your thing? <laughs> and so the whole idea of having someone that will support you in that is really important for butterflies. <laughs> Very interesting. It's funny how, as you keep talking about uh, the differences and um, I keep like matching up my friends, you know, with like what they might be. That's really fun. Ah, okay. So you have spouted out so much genius in the last 10 minutes. I like, I have all these questions I want to ask you. <laughs> okay. So a lot of my tribe are people who are very, very gifted, right? They've come into this earth with amazing healing skills and listening skills. And they've got those um, big missions like you were talking about that you're helping people with. And they're often quite lost and they don't feel either capable of turning that mission into reality or they're not really at the worthiness place yet where they're going to go all out and give it a try. So I know you've got a lot of really solid history in helping people like that. What can you say would be a good place to start in getting them into the mindset that everything that they want is possible? Right. That, yeah, mindset. Mindset is a big deal. And it, it, I'm going to temper that a little bit with with my peacocks, because peacocks, even where mindset for peacocks, they still need to be in action, um, unless they're so shut down that they can't get in action. You know, even peacocks will get to a point where they're so shut down because of self-worth issues. Um, that, that that needs to be tackled first. And so a absolutely, there, there's a, a piece of validation that needs to happen. And I like to do an experiment for people like that, especially who need a mindset adjustment. Because as you know, spirit is always giving you answers and, and dudges and pokes and, <laughs> and all those kind of things. And so I like to start taking something, and you could even do this with your intuitive drawing, is if you took your message and saying, what, what is the highest and best for today? And you did a drawing on it. And then um, you get some sort of answer that says, um, you need to call you know, this person about something, or, or you need to connect with a person or something like that. But your internal system says, whoa, wait, stop. That is not what we were supposed to do today. They will not give you the answer. This will not work. Um, and so now you just need validation from your spirit that it's true. Mm. And so instead of saying, I'm going to go do that, you need to say to your trusted source, give me validation. So instead of asking for an action or anything else, it's start to get validation that what you're doing is right. And so coming up with some of those external symbols that work for you. I know a lot of people have butterflies or monarch butterflies are, are part of their symbol system. They'll have them show up in dreams or even physically or, or you know, a, a drawing or anything else like that, that they're on the right track. And so... I think feathers a lot too, right? Oh, people yes. see feathers. Pennies on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. all those kind of things is to start to look for validation today that you're on the right track. So instead of trying to get into too much action that really shuts you down and puts you in a place that your internal chatter is just going crazy, is to simply look for validation that you're on the right track. And so that whole piece of building up validation so that then you can take a baby step. 
And then not trying to go from step three to step nine. Like a lot of times we say, well, I want to make hundred thousand this year, but you're not making a thousand. That's, that is possible. Yet the m- mental shift that needs to happen for it requires a lot of clarity. And so that whole piece of validation is really fun in, um, one of the courses that I built called the Soul Advisor Guidance System, we actually do an experiment where we look at the seven to 10 ways that most people get validation. Hmm. And so there's ways that most people get some sort of answer. Some people is just knowing, they just suddenly know. Some people have physical signs show up, um, you know, like you say, the pennies or feathers or, or butterflies. Some people have um, a. Uh, Three things. I like to call it three things. Where three things in a row that seem really random, but the all on the same day they show up or within a short period of time. And then you know that they're really pointing you in that direction because you have an awareness all of a sudden, wait, that's exactly what I was looking for. Or the door opens or someone shows up or, you know, three things, that kind of thing. Um, and so when you start to look through what is your main validation method, some people have dreams. So, you know, and so what is the main validation method, then start there. Say, well, if I normally have dreams, then make sure you're getting enough rest so you'll have a dream that will validate what you're you're attempting to move toward. And so the whole idea of setting up a scientific experiment for us, you know, science-minded people, (laughs) is that we're going to set a hypothesis that says, my guidance is true. So now we ask a question of our guidance, we get our answer and say, okay, show me that's true. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. It's funny, um, even people like me, you know, I talk to the spirits all day, I talk to my higher self, I do intuitive art, you know, all of that. I still stop myself sometimes and I'm like, should I really do that? Is that really right for me? Actually, I've been considering starting a vlog where I kind of like follow myself around all day and create a little video of what I did that day or any epiphanies I had, you know, that I wanted to share and didn't, didn't feel like making into a whole long video. Yeah. And I've been wondering about this for months now. And for some reason, or there's something stopping me. And so this would be a perfect example of, okay, um, my higher self is wanting me to vlog or vlogging is in my highest joy. Show me that's true. And I can set up that experiment to get validation. Yeah, exactly. That would be really fun. Yeah. I could, yeah, I could think you could do it via like Snapchat where you just have those little snippets that, mm-hmm. you know, they're only like three seconds long each and you string them together into one thing. But if you ever do Snapchat... <laughs> I'm trying it, you know, I thought I didn't really get into it, but that is a really easy way to start vlogging because there's no editing, there's no uploading, there's no nothing. Exactly. And so you just pop it out to the few people and then you could see if it works. Or <laughs> That's true. Very good idea. See, this is what happens when you collaborate. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Huh? I just still don't, I had my son's, um, girlfriend tried to train me on snapchat i'm like i don't get it show me this <laughs> she kept showing me i'm like i still don't get it but i get snapchats from them and i, I think they're fun so <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is a very non-intuitive kind of platform i found it's a little, yeah. a little weird but i'm just must be too old now so <laughs> <laughs> now what does that say about me <laughs> Although their little icon is a little ghost, which I think is kind of odd. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, it's very odd. We could call it a little angel instead. We'll make it a little angel instead of a ghost, and that'll be okay. <laughs> so, what have you found in working with people who want and deserve and get miracles? What is, is there a theme of what happens or what creates a miracle? Like, can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, You know, one is, first of all, is to know what a miracle is, is that a lot of times miracles are happening every day and we're saying, well, that was either a coincidence, that wasn't a miracle. You know, we discount all the crazy things that happen to us, say, oh, well, that just happened. Or no, that was your miracle today. And so part of it is acknowledging, first of all, that they're happening all the time and to start to recognize them. 
that they're showing up at, at all the time. The, and then the last step before a miracle is action. And so there is always an action that needs to take place between the clarity of what you want to have and what the miracle is. And then the relaxation in the middle that it might not look like what you think it's going to look like. And so that attachment to it's got to be this. No, that's not how miracles work. You don't get to have exactly that, but it's going to be something that or better. And so to really recognize that what you ask for and start to really hone how you ask so that you ask in a way that you're actually getting what you want and not what seems like it would be great. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of times we, we look at, at what we really want to have happen. We say, I want a new car. And we think how that looks is that we're going to go to a car dealer and we're going to put money down and we're going to buy a car. Well, that's what a normal person does when they're going to buy a car, but sometimes it doesn't. And if you're in a place where you really need a car to manifest, and I've had a several friends that this has happened to, <laughs> they were like, my car broke down, I need a car, I, I, need, I don't know how I can afford a new car, but I have to have a car, what am I going to do? And so they, they had to get, first of all, to a centered place saying, what do I really need? Well, I don't really need a car, I need transportation. What does that look like? Well, for one of them, it actually turned out being a, a friend gave them an old car that they had. They actually gave them a car. That was kind of cool. <laughs> it was kind of old, and it, but it worked, and, and that's what she needed. For another person that that happened to, it actually turned out that she did go to the dealer. They worked out a way for her to be able to get financing that she never thought she'd be able to get, and she was able to actually get a brand new car, which was kind of exciting. And then for the last person that, you know, it's kind of funny. I've had, I've worked with three people on this. <laughs> the last person I worked with, it, with, the way it looked is that she actually got a ride. She, you know, she, it turned out that the collaborative piece of that was what she really needed. She needed to stop looking at, I'm in charge of my world. I'm a lone ranger making this happen. And what her big lesson was is that people are there to help her and they really want to help her. And so she was getting rides all kinds of places and having all kinds of amazing things happen because of her reaching out and asking for a ride somewhere. I love that. So yeah, it's letting go then of, of well, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. and what do I really need? And, and will spirits pro provide me with exactly what is best for me right now? Yeah, I know. I often think about that and how, when we try to assert too much control or if we think that like this part of us really has control, we're just the receivers, right? Like we get to dream and we get to do, but we're not really the ones who are making that final say over what shows up. It's more like our expanded self or God or whatever you believe in. Um, and so that idea of surrender, of letting go of control, trying to be too you know, tight about what things show up as that's what you're saying right just whatever yeah. shows up is for our best good yeah and to to look at it as true timing as as a principle of the world like that that it will show up exactly the way and time that it needs to and that's with the caveat saying that you hold it in clarity and that you do the actions that show up each day, even if your action is like exercise today. And you're like, I don't need to exercise, I need a car. <laughs> no, that's what showed up, so now you need to exercise. And so doing the thing that shows up as your daily practice today, knowing that in true time, that will show up for you. Mm -hmm. So how can we connect more with the moment, every moment, and really understand that, like, this moment is perfection. If we can just dive into this moment, we're going to get the most out of it. It's going to propel us into a great next moment. Um, because I don't know about you, but when we're in the moment, like, colors are more vivid. People are nicer. You get much more enjoyment out of life. And I don't know if everyone has experienced that. What do you think? Uh, 
That is a that is a really beautiful place, and I think in the observation of us us as the observer in that is what it is one of those difficult concepts, right? It's saying who who am I and who am I watching? Who am I <laughs> as as my deeper and best self? And me as the observer is where the the deep joy lives and where the the observation of the brighter colors and the more love and compassion shows up. And so starting with compassion of me as an imperfect human here is is watching myself saying, wow, that didn't work out. (laughs) And and there she goes again. (laughs) And, And having compassion and love for that. And then ultimately expanding that out to other people, places, the, the planet, um, and our mission in the world. Does that make even sense? <laughs> well, it does to me. And it's so okay. in this whole interview, Jean, I've kind of felt like our higher selves are like having their own conversation. Like there's a party going on up there. And so I'm a little like weirdly spaced out almost. Um, talking to you and I feel this other conversation and you are, I feel like you're saying all these amazing things, but they're almost a little, they're, they, they, this conversation might be a little over people's heads. I don't know. Well, I'm okay it, with it's that. over my head. It's over my head, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Completely over my head. And it comes back to, so, so what do you want, what do you want to do then today? Right. It comes down to then today. So what happens today as a result of this conversation and and what are we going to go do because of that? And and I, I look at my little to-do list, where to go, it's over here, <laughs> but I've based off my three things. I only write a number next to three things on the day. What are the three things that have to happen? Everything else is gravy. And, and those three things, and I still, you know, I have a couple emails to send and I have a couple, you know, calls to make and that kind of thing. And um, I feel like greater love is showing up because of hanging out here in this space with you is that that's just all that shows up is, is a deeper connection. And, and how do I send more love to those people that they don't even know that they're getting because of our conversation today. And so we get to stand here in this space of, of connection and this higher connection and, and, I, I stand that we are connected with everyone that's listening. Like we've, we've created a field that is lifting every person and every task that they're going to do today is going to be more effective, more in line, more joyful, all those things because of this field that we've set up today. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So we've got a couple minutes left. Do you want to share some of your artwork with us or just, you know, tell us about what it is that you do? Um, Well, absolutely. You know, when I started painting, I um, I actually, when I went to art school, I went for furniture design (laughs) and uh, because it seemed very practical at the time. And uh, without the thought that I actually didn't have a workshop where I didn't know where I was, <laughs> I didn't live in North Carolina, right, where they make all the furniture. And I had ta- when I was in school, art school, I actually took some painting classes, which I nearly failed, <laughs> which is pretty funny. And so when I started painting and as, as an expression of me, I didn't really have any aspiration that it was going to be anything fabulous. Um, and it probably still isn't, but that's okay. <laughs> it makes me happy. Um, and um, I really was just looking though for what was truly me, have something me show up. And I think that that's most artists on the planet have a thought that it's all been done. Like there, there's nothing unique on the planet. There's nothing showing up that will be, you know, they'll look at it and say, Oh, Rachel must have done that. Right. <laughs> because, um, it was created. And one day I was in the studio, in a studio, actually I was taking a open studio class with a bunch of people and I was kind of bored and I was just slapping paint on the thing. And I, it was all blue. And I, I stood back and looked at it and said, Oh my gosh, there are three people in my painting. I should paint them. <laughs> and so I just started painting the people that showed up on my canvas that day. And I really discovered in this intuitive style just by um, hanging out with my canvas. 
And um, over the next few years, I developed that into something that felt like it spoke to other people as well. And um, ultimately, I started creating then um, whatever showed up in, in a style that was designed to have the co- colors vibrate together mm-hmm. so that they would um, create a natural path and, a, and an energetic movement for people and create a meaning behind it f- for them as well as for me. And so I, I did a few classes um, where I helped people paint their paths and we talk about you know, how colors vibrate together. Here, here's one that I did on one of our paths, <laughs> painting our paths, um, but creating a path then that vibrates because of how the colors work together. So I'd actually teach people color theory, which I always thought was kind of fun. Um, and then, oh, this was upside down. There we go. Another path that I did with some people, you know, with some imagery in it that was about moving along the path and making it work and um, looking then at what the colors mean for each person and that kind of thing. Um, and then this big one behind me, can you see that way behind me, <laughs> the yep. peacock back there? Um, that was one of the first peacock paintings I did. Um, and it, um, it really created a different kind of energy for me. And um, it, it's one of them that, that continues to strike people. And I still have the original. I know I've, I've, I've sold it a whole bunch of time as, um, as prints. Um, but I still have the original on that one, you know, <laughs> who knows where that one goes. I think the energy of that one gets to stick with me for a while. Um, but I love the idea of painting um, for the moment and um, what shows up and then how that can support the rest of the world after that. And so that's, that's what I've been working on. This other one behind me is a partially pin- finished painting of a butterfly. Um, still working on that one a little bit. Um, but again, the colors that vibrate, I love those complementary colors that make everything else pop off there. The orange and the blue, um, is really designed to create an energetic shift in a room, um, and how it makes the, the energy work there as well. So that's, that's what I'm working on. Excellent. You're so inspiring. I love how you don't limit yourself, you know, like business, miracles, art, games, your own, you know beautiful theories of people and how it works. And it's all just really, really, really cool. So thank you so much for being on the show. And why don't you tell everyone again where they can text to? Okay. So they're going to text to 313131 and they're going to type the word butterfly. That's all. (laughs) Cool. Any parting words for us for today? Oh, I send you all love and peace and joy and that today I I stand for you all to have the most productive, amazing, miraculous day that you've had in a long time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jean. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to intuitive art and you've never done it with me, go to intuitiveartacademy.com for your free class. You'll learn how to have a conversation with your higher self in three easy steps. That's intuitiveartacademy.com. And if you're already a pro or you've done the free class and you want to learn more about creating abundance from your purpose, go to workyourpurpose.com and you'll watch a free video series all about what it takes to create a purposeful income from doing what you love. All right, enjoy and I will see you later. Bye bye.